Hey everyone! So today's video is going to be talking about all of the anticipated releases I have on my list for this year. And I have a goal this year of reading down my physical TBR. So I am trying as much as possible to not add to my collection and to instead read through all the books, because I have over a hundred of them, read through all the books on my physical TBR before starting to buy new books, or at least get down to what is a more reasonable number <laughs> to have on my unread shelf. But that being said, anticipated release videos are some of my absolute favorites to watch. And when I am in the mood to go and find new books to add to my collection, I always go to these videos because I just love hearing what my other booktuber friends are anticipating. I figured for all of you watching who are interested in buying new books and reading new releases this year, I would still put this video out just in case you find it helpful for maybe finding Finding something that you'd like to read. This is the first of these anticipated release videos I'll do, and this is just for the springtime. So we're gonna go through books that have already been released since I'm a little late releasing this video. So we're gonna go through January, February, March, and April. So four months worth of new releases, and I have quite a lot of books to talk about here. And I'll start with all of the books by authors that I've read before so that I can kind of talk to you about other books I also recommend by that author. And then we'll talk about books by authors who are new to me or debut authors that just have really good sounding books as well. So starting in the release order with January books by authors I've already read from that are already out, we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. So I read The Wife Upstairs. I really enjoyed that one. I also read the other one, the island one. What was that one? Reckless Girls. I also read Reckless Girls, which I had a lot of fun with, even though it wasn't perfect. I, at the time I was reading it, was really enjoying it. It gave me lost vibes. So The Villa is the newest release, and it says it is a deliciously wicked gothic suspense set in an Italian villa with a dark history. So. I'm very intrigued. We also have Song of Silver, Flame Like Night by Amelie Wenzel, which is the first book in a new, I believe, trilogy by this author. So I read both Blood Air and Red Tigress, which are the first two books in her original Blood Air trilogy that was her debut. And I really, really liked Blood Air. I thought it read very mature for a YA fantasy book. I wasn't as big of a fan of Red Tigress and did end up DNFing that series, but this new series sounds amazing and I really liked her writing style. Again, I like that she has this kind of older tone to her YA fantasy books. So if you're kind of a, a you still like reading YA fantasy, but you don't like the ones that read too, too young, uh, I would highly recommend checking her out. This new one says, in a fallen kingdom, one girl carries the keys to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at its heart. An epic fantasy series inspired by the mythology and folklore of ancient China. So, sounds great. I'm definitely wanting to read this one. The next one I have is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. This one, I read her first debut book, which was A Flicker in the Dark, and I thought that that one was really well written and well done. And even though it wasn't one of my favorite thrillers, I just had a really good time while I was in it. So I definitely want to check out more of her writing. I really liked her writing style. This one is about a mother whose toddler goes missing one night, is taken from his crib, and she is on a mission to find him. So I think that this one's gonna kind of hit hard. <laughs> um, me having a toddler myself, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous to read this one, but I do think it sounds very good and I really like this author's writing, so. The next January release I have is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix has become an author that I always look to see if he has a new release coming out because I really, really loved two of his books I've read, which was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and My Best Friend's Exorcism. That latter one is one of my favorite horror, one of my favorite books of all time, regardless of genre. and. Even though I didn't love the Final Girl support group, that uh, that premise 
didn't really intrigue me. I'm not a huge uh, slasher fan. I'm not a huge fan of slasher movies or slasher books, but I am a huge fan of haunted house books. So Grady Hendrix writing a haunted house book, sign me up. I'm here for it. I'm so excited for it. It's about, I think, two siblings who inherit this house and they want to renovate it and resell it. They don't want to keep it in the family, but they find out it might be haunted. So <laughs> I'm so here for it. I'm so excited. The next book I have is The Drift by CJ Tudor. I read Chalkman by CJ Tudor and I wasn't a huge fan. So I haven't checked out anything else by CJ Tudor. However, The Drift has a premise that makes me think I'm, if, if I were to enjoy uh, this author's works, this would be the book I think I would enjoy. So I want to give this author a second chance. It says three ordinary people risk everything for a chance at redemption in this audacious, utterly gripping novel of catastrophe and survival at the end of the world. So I, I think that this has potential to be one that I really, really enjoy. The last of the January releases by authors I've already read from is Exiles by Jane Harper. Jane Harper, I love. I love Jane Harper's writing style so, so much. She writes the most atmospheric mystery thriller books ever. Oh my gosh. The Dry by her is one of my favorites. I loved Force of Nature. I really enjoyed The Lost Man. I think she does characters and atmosphere so, so well. So this one is set at a festival site on a warm spring night and it's about a missing mother. So Oh, I'm just, I, yeah, I really, really like Jane Harper's writing. I highly recommend checking her out if you really like atmospheric, just well-written thrillers. All right, now let's talk about all of the January books by authors I haven't read from before. The first one's called The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. So this is one that the cover initially caught my attention and the premise sounds so much fun. Uh, Gita's no good husband disappeared five years ago. She didn't kill him, but everyone thinks she did, no matter how much she protests. So I think you're following this widow with this really bad reputation who kind of starts to embrace her reputation. How much fun does that sound? So definitely one I want to check out. The next one I have is Lunar Love by Lauren Kung Jessen. This sweet enemies to lovers debut rom-com filled with Chinese astrology will undoubtedly prove to be a perfect match with readers of Helen Huang, Jasmine Guillory, and, and Helena Hunting. So I mean, great comps there. This one, I love, love enemies to lovers. That's one of my favorite romance tropes. And I love the idea of mixing it with like Chinese astrology. I think that sounds so fun. So this is one I definitely have on my radar. The next one I have is The Survivalist by Kashana Kali. So this is one that says, a single black lawyer puts her career and personal moral code at risk when she moves in with her coffee entrepreneur boyfriend and his doomsday prepping roommates in a novel that's packed with tension, curiosity, humor, and wit from a writer with serious comedy credentials. Sign me up. That sounds like so much fun. Like this kind of witty, humorous, doomsday type novel. I think it sounds like a blast. The next one I have is The Daughters of Izdihar by Hadir El Spai. So this one says it's a debut author. It's the first book in an incredibly powerful new duology set wholly in a new world, but inspired by modern Egyptian history about two young women, Nahal, a spoiled aristocrat used to getting what she wants, and Georgina, a poor bookshop worker used to having nothing, who find they have far more in common, particularly in their struggle for the rights of women and their ability to fight for it with forbidden elemental magic. Elemental magic, Egyptian history, fantasy world. This sounds awesome. So I really would love to check this one out. The next one I have is God Killer by Hannah Kainer. This one is another high fantasy novel about a girl who kills gods for a living and she really enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill, the god of white lies who is connected to a little noble girl on the run. This one has a lot of really good early buzz, so very excited to check it out. I think it is the first uh, book in a new series, but I'm not sure how many books are going to be in that series. Do I Know You by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegman Broca. When a couple starts to feel like they're married to a stranger, a flirtatious game of pretend becomes the spark they need to reignite their relationship. I don't know. I think it sounds like it has a lot of potential and it has a really cute cover. So 
I kind of want to check this one out. <laughs> All Hollows by Christopher Golden. I'm not gonna lie, this one was purely the cover that drew me in. I mean, look at that cover. It says, with the 80s nostalgia of Stranger Things, this horror drama from best-selling author Christopher Golden follows neighborhood families and a mysterious lurking evil on one Halloween day. I'm curious why this is uh, coming out in January. This sounds like a perfect fall time read, but I'm so intrigued by that premise and that cover good Halloween time read if you need a good idea for one. Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim. So this is the first book in an epic fantasy series set in an Arabian inspired land. Raised to protect her nation from the monsters lurking in the sands, 17 year old Imani must fight to find her brother whose betrayal is now their greatest threat. This one is a YA fantasy and I have started to lose some interest in YA fantasy in general. However, I do really like that YA fantasy always has super cool diverse fantasy worlds and characters and I think that this one sounds particularly unique and interesting based on its setting and it's like spice magic it sounds really cool so I'm curious to see what people think of this one because I'm hoping that this is a good one to pick up when I'm in the mood for a YA fantasy episode 13 by Craig DeLuey this one is purely based on the hook, the premise. Oh, it sounds so good. A ghost hunting reality TV crew gain unprecedented access to an abandoned and supposedly haunted mansion, which promises a groundbreaking 13th episode. But as they uncover the secret history of the house, they learn that reality TV might be all too real. It says it is a novel of horror and psychological suspense. Again, I'm here for any sort of haunted, house, mansion, apartment, any of that is buzzwords for me <laughs> to pick up a book. Uh, so I am super excited for this one. Then we have Mame by Jessica George. This one says it is a contemporary book that follows this girl named Maddie who lives in London, but her mother spends most of her time in Ghana. So Maddie is the primary caretaker for her father who suffers from Parkinson's. And when her mom returns from her latest trip to Ghana, Maddie leaps at the chance to get out of the family home and finally start living. So I think it's just gonna be this really sweet kind of poignant like familial drama and I sometimes just absolutely love those. Finally, the last January release I have is Night Wherever We Go by Tracy Rose Payton. This is a gripping, radically intimate debut novel about a group of enslaved women staging a covert rebellion against their owners. Historical fiction sounds really impactful, beautiful. It could be like this gorgeous lush writing that sometimes I just crave books like this, so I think that this is another one that has a lot of potential to be super memorable, maybe an all-time favorite. So now let's get into February. There aren't quite as many. Uh, starting with, again, the authors I've read from before, Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. I haven't read a Jojo Moyes in quite a while, but I've read like five or six of her books and I always enjoy them. I always have a good time. I think my favorite so far has been The Girl You Left Behind. This one says it is more of a contemporary novel, a story of mix-ups, mess-ups, and making the most of second chances. Who are you when you are forced to walk in someone else's shoes? Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. This is another one I need to catch up with her backlist and her releases from the couple past years, but she wrote one of my favorite books of all time, Fix Her Up, is one of my favorite romances, and then I loved her holiday uh, novel, Window Shopping, um, so I just really like her brand of romance and her way of writing steamy scenes. I think she's really good at it. And this is about a starchy professor and the bubbly neighbor he clashes with at every turn. So I love a good grumpy sunshine. I think that this could be a lot of fun. And then we have The Angel Maker by Alex North. I loved, loved Whisper Man by Alex North. That is one of my favorite thrillers. So this is his newest book. It says, a dark, suspenseful new thriller about the mysteries of fate, the unbreakable bond of siblings, and a notorious serial killer who was said to know the future. Ah, oh, he just does such a good job writing really compelling like villains and also like family bonds. So it sounds like he's definitely exploring that in this book and I can't wait for it. 
Okay, and then just one in February that I have on my list uh, from a, an author I haven't read before, and that is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chakshi. So I do know, though, that I'm getting this book in the Fairy Loot subscription box since I'm a subscriber for their adult fantasy books, and I'm super excited about it because it sounded so good. It is a sumptuous, gothic-infused story about a marriage that is unraveled by dark secrets, a friendship cursed to end in tragedy, and the danger of believing in fairy fairy tales. I know it's this author's adult debut as well, so I'm really excited to check it out. I can't wait to get my edition of it. Now we are in March, and March I have a good amount too, so starting again with the books I've read from this author before, uh, I Will Find You by Harlan Coben. I am um, I loved Runaway by Harlan Coben, so he has now become an author that I just have to check out more from. He has a huge, huge backlist of books, uh, and I definitely need to catch up on his newer releases as well, but this one just sounds so good. It says, an innocent father serving life for the murder of his own son receives evidence that his child may still be alive and must break out of prison to find out the truth. Oh, that sounds so good. And then the only other one that I have from March uh, that I've read this author from before is A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, which is a haunting Southern Gothic that explores the dark, twisted roots lurking just beneath the veneer of a perfect home and family. Again, haunted houses, anything creepy house related, I'm like so here for. So I'm very excited. Okay, and talking now about ones I haven't um, read from this author before. So the first one being The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Uh, this one is by Shannon Chakraborty, the start of a new series by this author. And The City of Brass is on my must read list of this year. So I will get to this author this year, uh, but it, you know, I still am very interested in this new series, and actually, Jashana has already read it. She read an early copy of it and loved it, so I'm already so excited based off of great reviews it's been getting. This is one that I also know I'm going to be receiving from my Fairy Loot subscription, so this actually might be one I, I'll read this year. We'll see. This is a new trilogy of magic and mayhem on the high seas in this tale of pirates and sorcerers, forbidden artifacts and ancient mysteries, in one woman's determined quest to seize a final chance at glory and write her own legend. So excited, that sounds amazing. The next one I have is Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. And this is one that very much sounds out of my comfort zone, but could be one that actually ends up really surprising me. Uh, so this is a contemporary that says it is about Darley, the eldest sister in this like well-connected old money family. And basically her trading in her job and her inheritance for motherhood. It says it's rife with indulgent pleasures of life among New York's one percenters. It's a smart escapist novel that sparkles with wit. It's about the peculiar unknowability of someone else's family, the miles between the haves and have nots and everything in between and the insanity of first love. So it sounds like it's exploring a lot. It sounds very ambitious, but it could be really, really good. <laughs> Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. The title alone for this one had me hooked. It says, a lonely shopkeeper takes it upon herself to solve a murder in the most peculiar way in this captivating mystery. I think that this sounds so cute. I, I totally, totally want to read this. The next one is called How I'll Kill You by Ren Stefano. This says it is your next stay up all night thriller about identical triplets who have a nasty habit of killing their boyfriends and what happens when the youngest commits their worst crime yet, falling in love with her mark. What? What? Murderer triplets? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta check that out. That sounds way too fun. I don't know. I don't know what's, what that says about me that I find that intriguing and fun, but I totally want to read that. So those are all the books for March. So we are officially in the last month of this anticipated release video. Oh my gosh, so many books. And I have a lot in this one. So I'm going to, again, go rapid fire. The first one is Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. I really liked Electra by this author and have been wanting to read Ariadne. 
This one says it is a reimagining of the myth of Atalanta, a fierce huntress raised by bears and the only woman in the world's most famous band of heroes, the Argonauts. I don't know anything at all about this original myth, but I really like this trend of kind of these Greek myth and just mythology in general retellings. I think they're really interesting and they always have like beautiful writing. So I definitely want to check this one out. The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stort, the third and final book in the Drowning Empire trilogy. I'm totally checking it out. This one I'm for sure buying, ordering, reading because, oh my goodness, I love this series. The first book is like five stars easy. Second book I didn't like as much, but the third book, I mean, it has the potential to be a favorite series. So let's hope that the last book sticks the landing. Happy Place by Emily Henry. I feel like everyone will have this on their list because Emily Henry is so popular right now, but I really liked Beach Read, was not a huge fan of people we meet on vacation, and I still need to read book lovers, but Happy Place sounds like a really fun premise. It says, a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends. I don't know. It could be really fun. I definitely want to check this one out, and I'm sure I will hear a lot about it. <laughs> so I'm excited. In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. I'm one of those people who absolutely loved The House in the Cerulean Sea. I also enjoyed Under the Whispering Door, but not quite as much. I thought it was a little more middle of the road for me, but this one sounds so sweet. It's like a Pinocchio retelling, I think, which... I love Pinocchio. It says, author TJ Klune invites you deep into the heart of a peculiar forest and on the extraordinary journey of a family assembled from spare parts. I want to read it. I want to read it. And then I have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Taylor Adams, I read No Exit by this author and I loved No Exit. Oh my gosh, I could not stop reading that book. So I kind of want to check something else out by this author. And their second book, I think it was called Hairpin Bridge, didn't get great reviews and it didn't have the most intriguing premise, but this one is getting really good early reviews and it does have a really interesting premise. So I think I definitely want to check this one out. It says, after posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous in this pulse pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror. It kind of sounds like a reverse Misery by Stephen King instead of the killer reader. It's like a killer author. I don't know. It sounds really good. Last section of this video is books where I haven't read from the author before all coming out in April. The first being Homecoming by Kate Morton. So I know Kate Morton has so, so many books that I gotta catch up on if I end up liking this one. But this one has such an interesting premise. So this one says it's an epic novel that spans generations, and it asks what we would do for those we love and how we protect the lies we tell. It explores the power of motherhood, the corrosive effects of tightly held secrets, and the healing nature of truth. Above all, it is a beguiling and immensely satisfying novel. I've been wanting to check out this author, uh, and it seems like this is a good one to do that with. Sisters of the Lost Nation by Nick Medina. This is a debut author and it says a young native girl's hunt for answers about the women mysteriously disappearing from her tribe's reservation lead her to delve into the myths and stories of her people, all while being hunted herself in this atmospheric and stunningly poignant debut. That sounds great. I think it has such a good hook. I definitely want to check this one out. If We're Being Honest by Kat Shook. This is a contemporary that I just think sounds like it could be one of those heartwarming, feel-good, family drama connections, finding your connections to your family and your friends and all that. If We're Being Honest reminds you that while no one can break your heart like your family can, there's really no one better to put you back together. So... I think that sounds great. The last one is Ascension by Nicholas Binge. This is a mind-bending speculative thriller in which the sudden appearance of a mountain in the middle of the Pacific Ocean leads a group of scientists to a series of jaw-dropping revelations that challenge the notion of what it means to be human. <gasps> that sounds so deep. Oh my gosh. And it's a sci-fi horror. So I am a sucker for sci-fi horror. And I am totally here for this. Okay, so those are all of the books that I am anticipating, or at least I hope to one day read. 
And maybe this list was helpful for you. If you're looking for some good new releases to check out, uh, let me know if you are planning on checking out any of these down below and what your most anticipated release is for the spring. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.